it's absolutely amazing to be back here on this stage and uh, yeah, to share something with you. Um, Wilka famously said, go to the limits of your longing. Do you? Do you go to those limits, those edges? the continuously unfolding of your own longing, of your soul-pulsing, heart-called, vast and mysterious being. Can you bear your longing? I feel to bear our longing. It's a little bit like loneliness. Can you bear your loneliness? Would you give it away very quickly? Disappointment. What about your pleasure? Can you bear it? Can we think about sex? Can we bear that tease, that heightening, that coming to the edge? Or does the need for releasing that pressure become too much? Nothing wrong with that, of course. And it's almost this unbearable balance between pain and pleasure. Yet there are rewards to staying with, of letting ourselves be in this stretch. That's where the treasures are found. I don't know about you, but I've found joy when I really allow myself to stay in bare grief. I've also discovered that there is a sense of, as, as Roger mentioned, a sense of union, of oneness, when I have stayed with and bared my own sense of loneliness. But we have to be able to bear the latter first. So can you bear your own longing? It's interesting, isn't it? And what do you long for? Do you ever ask yourself this? You know, what do you really desire? And maybe for you, it's a longing for freedom. That could be from fear, from money issues, health issues, yourself, your loved ones. Maybe it's a longing for a beloved, or for a touch, or for a bit spanking. Maybe it's a longing for intimacy. Maybe it's a longing for riches and fame and success and fortune. Maybe it's a longing just for peace. That sounds like a good thing to long for. Maybe it's a longing for love. Or maybe it's a longing to live just as you are unapologetically in the world. Do you allow yourself to feel your longing? Because once we touch our longing, we have to be able to stay with it and let ourselves expand into it. And when we do so, we start to disappear. Our edges begin to disappear. And we become like, I think, what the goal of meditation is, that one-pointedness. We find this place of unity, of oneness, of connection. Our self disappears into that which we long for. Eve longed for knowledge. She was tempted by the snake and suffered the repercussions of her actions. But was it worth it to her? Was that apple actually really golden and juicy and delicious? What did it taste of? Why didn't anyone stop to ask her before they got all busy with punishing her and consequences, you know, get out of paradise now and then, basically? And what about Michelangelo's Vatican ceiling? You've got these images of between man and God of these, these fingers reaching, these hands reaching, but not quite touching. There's a Face there, a little kind of naughty god tease going on. <laughs> <laughs> Longing is about that tease, it's that taut tease of the space between. It's an energetic force field. That which <coughs> we can bear, it stretches our edges of who we are and grows us into becoming and reaches us to touch and to kiss that hand of God. And that space is a rotting, it holds everything and nothing all of life, all of possibility. And longing is a prayer of full-bodied supplication. And speaking of prayer, I read recently about a Catholic priest whose own longing um, meant that he fell in love with a satanic erotica writer. A true story. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> so the thing is about our longing, it's strong, but it can untether us if we give into it as well and if we're not careful with it. Because under the surface of this longing is more than just a simple human desire. This longing is a desire of life to be fully expressed through us and to enjoy those feelings of aliveness and joy. 
even though they are often really incredibly intense. This desire, this longing, was submerged a long time ago. I'm sure we all know, you know, of our parents basically saying to us, I've lost my page, where am I? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anymore, this is ageing and I sigh, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, there's a, okay. a longing, I don't care about it. Um, so, yeah, when we were younger, we were told to calm down. Yeah, we were told to, to quiet down, we were told to contain ourselves, stifle our voice not be so loud, not be so ecstatic, not be so happy, not to have intense feelings, not to feel at all. We learn to squash this life force within us down to an acceptable level, to bury our longings deep and to be afraid of our own aliveness, our own emotional intensity. We learn to be afraid of and even punish for, and not in a good way, our hungers. <laughs> Our longings may not be polite or civil. They might not be rational, logical or normal. They might be coated in the darkness where shadows and the taboo reside. Or they might be so bright that they blind us like the sun and threaten to scorch our sight, our fingertips and our very life. Our longing is a fire. It burns and it transforms its power. It's the heat of our heart muscle pumping. And it's where we rise over and over again like a phoenix from the ashes. Our longings are both dirty and divine because that's what we are. Delightfully human and animal in our instinctive, sensual appetites, messy as hell, and divinely devoted in the image of the gods themselves. Our longing, our longings are waiting for us to kneel upon the dark wooden floor of the confessional booth, the lattice casting lacy shadows of breath, the only sound the priest waiting anonymously. If our longings are part of this dirty and divine state of eros, then we must bow towards what we have been told to cast out, what we have been told is sin, the place where these intense forbidden fruits lie hidden most. Let's look at the seven deadly sins in a different light, shall we? Lust. Lust is longing for pleasure. Hot under the collar, desiring, lip-licking, frenzied, full of ripe anticipation. Seduction is a holy thing. We can merge into a puddle of divinity lost in lust, pleasures and chaos. Recreated, rebirthed, playing out like Shiva and Shakti, who basically were just fucking the whole time and created the world with their sacred <laughs> fornication. So if it's good enough for them. Greed. Greed is a longing for more. Why not be greedy? Why is that seen as selfish to want more? Sure, if we're living as if there's not enough to go around, then we're living from, there's the lack. It's poverty mentality. Please, sir, can I have some more? But what if there is enough? What if that's not even the question? What if there's a limitless, infinite amount for everybody? What if life is generosity? What if we rolled around in shitloads of money and bathed in baths of the highest quality of champagne, if that's your thing? What if we let ourselves say, I want this. I desire this. Sloth. <laughs> it's longing to do fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. <laughs> it's a, okay, pride. A longing to be seen and respected. What the fuck is so bloody well wrong in boasting of our achievements? That faux modesty of, oh, it's nothing, you know, diminishing our place in space and our gifts. Fuck that shit, man. <laughs> Own who you are in your full morning glory. It's your right to shine, so claim it. Wear it like a badge of power and honour. Speaking of badges, I've got lots of badges outside. There's three quid. It's a great <laughs> Envy. Envy is longing for what we secretly want. Envy's fucking potent, have you ever felt it? It's green eyed and snake mouth. I don't want what you have. It hurts envy, it throbs. But it's only longing calling us back to ourselves. Wrath. Wrath is a longing to be heard and respected. In a few days, it's the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Tone for your sins. Judged by something somewhere who is keeping score by a system I never signed up and agreed to, 
to be judged by others? Oh shit, Paul's got a two minute sign up. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> 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 um, To be wronged and punished, again, not in a good way. Our anger is sacred. Our no is sacred, our boundaries are sacred, and if anyone dares to violate those, then our wrath is more than allowed. Mm. Gluttony is a longing to be filled. What are you hungry for? Do you starve your desires to the minimum, pushing a solitary lettuce leaf crumb around your plate whilst you stare at the juicy bloody steak? <laughs> Why are you punishing yourself and not in a pleasurable way? Why are you denying yourself? Why not loosen your belt and take big bites and fill that belly so that it's round and soft and full like a globe? <laughs> and how does it feel when you don't listen to those longings and they sit and let and then satisfied? What might it be like if we fillet the priest, so to speak, and let it all out <laughs> and succumb to the confessions that burn us up inside? For everything is an expression of love. A longing for love. We don't trust that lying within us because that love is a powerful force. And when it's let out into the world, life increases, life grows, life expands. We lock it up instead, controlling it, repressing it, denying it. The message is don't trust that impulse, don't trust your humanity, don't trust yourself, and God forbid, do not, I repeat, don't even dare to trust the pull of your own longings. We have to face that. It's telling you something. Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 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 so, for the last minute. so, basically, yeah, I was going to say a lot of us like, especially if you, you know, have the spiritual path, you know, it's very strong, long means desires, it's wrong, you know, ego, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, for some of us it is. Yet, yeah, Eros is actually a part of our divinity. It's holy, it's sacred. It's our birthright. We've been fear, raised to fear that yes within us. And it's the most creative force that we know because our longing for meaning came out of art. Came out, oh, sorry, from longing for meaning came all of art, out of longing for truth, all of science, out of longing for love, the very fact of life. But it's not the thing itself that we long for, it's what it needs, what it gives us an impression of. It's like the scent of a flower we haven't found, or the echo of a tune we haven't yet heard, or a place we haven't yet visited. It's, it's something. So, just to leave you with this, my darlings, you know, because ultimately there's a really great question, which is, are you ready to let go yet? Are you ready to die? Or are you going to be holding on your list of to do? Yeah, I'll have my to do list. Definitely when I die, still be there. But going, I've still got longings. There's things that I need to fulfill. So my invitation to you is to write a love letter. Dear Longing. And use a quill made from those hairs at the back of your neck. That <laughs> Make the ink from the hot fire blood that courses your longings through your veins. Write it on parchment, parched from your greed and your thirst for more. Seal it with wax from the juices of your tears and those in between your legs. Tie it with heart string that stretches, because the heart doesn't break, it only ever stretches to bear more. And send it with this ability to let it go as a prayer and ask yourself, how would this moment be if I trusted the longings of my erotic self? Thank you. Thank you.